Uh, please welcome Andre, who is currently a game director and uh, game director of the game Gatewalkers. Uh, and uh, he has a lot of experience in game dev, uh, a lot of game direction experience, and he's going to tell us about the discovery of players' um, behavior, behavioral patterns, patterns. So we can start. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for introduction. Uh, I am Andrzej Stralinski, and I'm very happy that I can be here and uh, show you a uh, quite short, but uh, still, I hope, interesting uh, talk about discovery of player behavioral patterns and with the case study on Gatewalkers, uh, Gatewalkers uh, game. Uh, first, I would like to give some acknowledgement uh, because uh, this work was uh, developed um, uh, thanks to the uh, Polish uh, National Center for Research and Development Grant. Uh, and yeah, so let's dive into the uh, dive into the um, uh, who, who am I, so you can know uh, who's talking uh, and uh, what he knows. So I am Andrzej Swinski, I'm co-founder and CEO of iSquare Softworks, the indie game dev studio. I am also the game and creative director of Gatewalkers Game, uh, which is the case study of the uh, this talk, and I'm also assistant professor at Posen University of Technology. You can also see here some uh, uh, some my game development background and also my science background. Uh, so I think I can go, move forward and tell a little bit more about the studio itself and the people behind it. So uh, we are a studio that uh, have released uh, so far. Uh, the most prominent four games that we have released are Gatewalkers, Drill Wheel, Climber, Skies the Limit, and Imperia. We also do some work for hire, porting games, and adding networking to the existing games. And because we have quite short talk, I will uh, go uh, right now uh, directly to, to, the, to the case of our, our, our presentation. So first of all, let's uh, answer the question, what is the player behavioral pattern? So uh, starting from the, uh, from the definition of behavioral pattern, which is a recurrent ways of acting by individual or team toward a given objective in a given situation, or a recurrence of two or more responses that occur in prescribed arrangement or order. This is a general definition. What we need here, is we need to have a definition which is more suitable for video games. So let's define it as a player behavioral pattern is a recurrent way of playing the game by player or a group of players when we are playing in party, etc., etc. And the aim is to successfully have a good overcome from the game, like winning the combat, fulfill the quest, do the objective, etc. So this is a player behavioral pattern. So why we need the patterns? Why we should care about the patterns? First of all, to learn how players are playing the game. This gives a huge advantage when we are balancing the game, when we are trying to find overpowered and underpowered elements of the game, like items, tactics, skills, etc. We wish to know which elements of the gameplay is used by the players and what, for example, user experience making player to not doing something or omitting some kind of mechanics that we have implemented into the game. Also, we can use such behavioral patterns for bot creation. So we can create a friendly bot, which will help player to play the game because we can have the average player pattern. So how people are playing our game, we can meme exact player. We can learn how what patterns have exact player and use it to create a similar ex experience. And also we can fight players' patterns by creating enemies which are trying to to, to break the winning strategy of the player, which is also the pattern. So what we need to next uh, be aware of is that when you are playing the game, uh, usually the little bit more complex games, we have a strategy and tactics. So what is the strategy and what is the tactics? Strategy defines long-term goals, so how we wish to achieve them, without any specific step-by-step, -step, because step-by-step -step actions that we do in order to fulfill the, the, the long-term goal is a tactics, which is a smaller goal, shorter goal, and exact steps that we do in order to use maybe different tactics in order to fulfill the entire strategy. So in video games, for example, long-term goals can be to win the game by uh, doing combat, gathering, crafting, etc. 
And the important stuff is when we change our perspective from combat to gathering to crafting, etc. So the transition between these two states. The tactical pattern would be how we exactly face the some enemy to win the combat or which resources in what order we are uh, gathering in order to fulfill the, the, the goal. So in order to, to, to have some answers and find these patterns, we can use a process mining, which is the approach where we uh, discover knowledge about processes based on event logs. And here we will be just focusing on the first type of process mining, when we have an event log of the player's actions, and we find the patterns, which is a process model. So in fact, the idea is that we are finding based on the log very small patterns, we are gathering them together, and we have an entire pattern of how player is doing some part of the gameplay. But the crucial element is, okay, we have a theory, we have a gameplay. So what is the process? What is the instance? What is the activity? And what is the pattern? So first of all, we need to find a definition, what we will understand by the process, etc., in video games. So the process is the entire pattern. The instance or the case or the sequence, it's, it's different terms, are one execution of such process. And the single activity is a part of the instance or of the case of the process. So uh, if we wish to uh, see how we can do it on the case study of some game, let's, let me introduce a game that we will be, uh, I will be showing and I will be using as the example. The Gatewalkers is uh, is a, a isometric cooperative action RPG with survival, uh, where you uh, have a truly skill-based combat, where you are using your WSDA keys and aiming with mouse. You have a deep character customization, so a lot of items, which gives a really tremendous number of options and possibilities. So balancing the game or creating a bots which are also playing the game that you need to balance is. Uh, it's, it's really, really huge job for if you're doing this by your own as a designer. Uh, we ha you have a lot of cooperative mechanics, solo combo mechanics. Uh, each weapons have different skills. You, you are also exploring and trying to survive in different environments. So there's a really a lot of options. And for example, if you take a look on the just a combat, you have a number of skills. And if you play the skills in different order, here you have a long order of applying skills during the combat. Here you have a shorter even the, the, the sequence, but you are applying the combo and you can see the outcome is really different. Here is a much more stronger outcome. So this is not very straightforward situation. Uh, also, you have uh, you need to your players are exploring map, doing the objectives, gathering resources. Uh, and what is more, the game is process generated. So you have different types of worlds, and each type of world is generated procedurally genera in procedural manner. So each time when you're, for example, entering Ice World, you have different map. So how, how to manage it? So in case of strategy, first, what we need to know, how to gather data. So here, player is playing the game, is gener generating the log, and should this log or event log uh, have uh, information about single map or maybe single session of the player? One player log, all, all players all together, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in fact, uh, it's not easy task to know which option to, to, to choose. But what is important is that we do not need to care because we can, we can in, in fact, take all the logs and they will look quite similar. So we have some kind of activity, timestamps, and all others information about each action. Here we have number of enemies in the range, for example, and number of objects that we can interact with. So this is something that we are gather, uh, that we are able to gather when we have a, a game. And usually we have, we have this type of logs. And what we need to do to gather all these logs together, use some pattern discovery algorithm, and find the pattern. Uh, this is a short talk, so we do not have much time to, to discuss each and exact algorithm, how it works, etc. But I'm showing you some examples. Uh, we have also done a little bit more 
uh, easy to use and straightforward uh, gameplay miner, which is the algorithm dedicated for finding patterns in, in video games. But this all algorithm will work and will find the patterns based on event log, which is appropriately prepared. So have appropriate definition of process and instance also named a case of the process. So again, remember that the game Gatewalkers is procedural generated. So what we have here is that each time when we are entering the world, we take some config files, and based on this config files and some seed, we are generating a new map. So each map is, let's say, different. Yeah. So what is the process here? How we can find the process which allows us to discover the pattern? So the process here would be the way how player is playing the game when he's playing on the map generated by uh, one set of procedural generated config files, a config files that allow you to procedurally generate the map. So we see that the players are playing in similar manner. For example, if they are um, playing the game generated based on the similar worlds. So this is a process. The trace, so the instance of the process, is each gameplay. So when the player enters the map and when they leave the maps, this is the one trace of the process, one instance of the process. And what we need to have here, because we are discovering the strategic uh, pattern, we do not care about exact uh, activities. But what is important is, is this a combat or gathering resources, crafting, etc. Because we are thinking about, about uh, strategic, strategy in mind. So to the previous shown log, we need to add the process. So let's say this lo event log is uh, created by one fixed uh, type of config files. And the case, this is the one gameplay starting from here. So here the player enters the game and here leaves the game. And let's say the second iteration. So player again enters the same world generated by the same uh, config files, but uh, the, the second approach to the game is uh, next the activity. Here we see the different types of activities, but in the log, we have very, uh, very strict and very detailed description of what we are gathering, for example. What skill do we use, yeah? From the uh, strategic perspective, it is not very important. So what we can do, we can translate it to more strategic perspective. So we see the gathering, combat, doing the objectives, etc. And based on the discover algorithms that I have shown you, uh, so I tell you that which so which algorithm you can use to do it, you can transform this data into the graph that you can see on the right. So this graph shows the pattern which is used by the player uh, or the average players. It's depending on what logs. If you are entering the logs of one player, you know the strategy of this player. If you are using all the logs that you have gathered from all the players, you have the average pattern that people are using. And this pattern tells you that, that this you are in the state of, let's say, combat, and you are changing the state with this transition when this is happening on the map, for example, and the players start to gather the, the stuff, yeah? So based on that, you can see when and how often, how frequent players are changing what they are doing on the map. So from the game balancing, you can check the frequency of the transition if it's balanced, because sometimes you do not wish to have a balance a combat a versus gathering. But sometimes you wish to have, let's say, 50% of actions should be combat and all other actions should be another 50%. And check frequency of each node, how often we are doing the combat, the gathering, etc. If you are creating a bot, the AI, which works with this, with, with this pattern, you can simply replay this pattern with the probability. In case of tactics, you need to redefine the process and redefine the trace, the instance of the process, and also the activity. And you do not need to change anything other. So simply, if you are going deeper into this strategic pattern, like let, let's say, find the pattern inside the combat. So we need to define what the combat is. And for example, for gatewalkers, we believe that the combat, where we can see the pattern, that the process of combat is a using a one weapon. So if the skills are bounded to the weapons, so if you are using broadsword, this is a process. 
And each combat, so one combat using broadsword, is a trace or the instance of the process. Uh, in case of gathering, when you're gathering wood, for example, this is a process. And the, each period of short time window of gathering wood is a one instance of such a process, which must be inter interrupted, etc., etc., etc. So take a look into the combat. So as you can see, let's say we are finding the, the we're trying to find the combat pattern. So we see here that we do not need any other activities. And we see this is the our process. So the player is using the broadsword because all these skills are the broadsword skills. But here is one combat against hollow, and this is the second combat against deer. Yeah. So again, moving it through the algorithm gives us the graph. And this graph is similar to the previous one, where we can see the, the thickness and color of the transition tells us how important and how often is the transition. And the color uh, shows how often we are using one skill in the pattern. And as you can see, this is an auto skill in Gatewalker. So the most attacks that the player is doing is auto attack. So this is quite obvious pattern. But what you can see is that usually you are using as a secondary skill at the slot one. And very often the slot one is also used with slot two skill. These skills are not used as often as these three skills. And what we can find out here is, do we really believe this is something the designer wanted? So having this, this graph, we can find out what tactics is overpowered or underpowered because we can find also the outcome. Usually, if we take the logs when players are winning the game, this is a winning tactics, winning strategy that we are using. And this can be used, the similar approach we can use for combat, for gathering, for crafting and doing the objectives, yeah? Depending on the complexity of the game and complexity of, of your map uh, or, or your gameplay, the graph can be more complicated or less complicated. So just to sum up everything, we can use both the strategy pattern and tactical patterns together and see the entire graph of the gameplay. So as you can see, here we have a combat pattern, exploring pattern, etc. so tactic patterns. And they are connected with strategic patterns uh, and the transition between them. So to the balancing, it gives the look of entire game so we can have and see the strategic pattern connected with tactical patterns together and see which parts of the gameplay are imbalanced or underbalanced or not used at all. And we can find it by analyzing the frequencies between action types, uh, how each action type look like, or there are multiple combat patterns. For example, we probably wish to have a multiple combat patterns available in the game. The bot creation, uh, it gives us the ability to create a bot that is able to make a decision on strategic uh, view and on tactical view. And we are able to mimic strategy and beha tactical behavior and we make changes between these patterns. And to sum up, uh, I have shown you what is the behavioral pattern in video games. I have shown you how we can use such behavioral pattern in order to balance the game or create uh, uh, bots in, in the games. Uh, we discuss what is a strategical behavioral pattern and how to get it. Also, we talked about tactical behavioral patterns, what is the difference between them? And we have discussed a use case based on Gatewalker's game, how uh, we are able to perform all the stuff and calculations uh, in Gatewalker's game. And uh, yeah, that's everything that I have prepared for you today. Thank you very much for attention. And if you have any question, uh, questions, I will be very happy to, to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrzej, for your lecture. Uh, let's wait for some questions from the chat. There is a small delay, so we have to wait like a minute. No problem.
All right. It right. seems like there are no questions from the chat yet. So I have a question from myself. Uh, at which point, uh, how big does the game have to be? Uh, do you think to, you to start utilizing this method of discovering these patterns? Uh, in fact, it's, it can be started as fast as possible and it is best to, to start as fast as possible. So you can use this method even when you are doing the prototyping phase of the game. So when you are prototyping, uh, you are usually also sharing some kind of prototype with your testers or people who are uh, making, uh, helping you to find what works in the game, what does not work in the game. So if you start doing it very fast, you have the, the feedback also very fast. And what is important here, the feedback is not biased by, by, um, uh, by the person perspective and about the feelings about the game. Because if you're playing with such pattern or you are not playing with this pattern, this, the algorithm will show you this. So this, the, the, there is no, let's say, problem with, uh, with that uh, you are one of the people in somehow involved with, with the process of developing the game. So, so you will be probably uh, uh, give a little bit more positive reviews than, uh, than the other way. Also, um, if you are, uh, let's say, have external testers, it allows you to gather the outcome uh, uh, all together very fast in automatic manner. So there's also a huge advantage. And I believe if you do it when you have a first, let's say, working prototype, this is the moment when, when you should start. And you can then do it uh, on the, let's say, monthly basis or two months basis with each DLC addition, uh, balance changing, etc. You can do it again, again. You just need to record the event logs and send it to the, to the algorithm. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your lecture and your answer. Uh, we can end the stream. So uh, thank you again and see you next time. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.